All right, welcome to lesson three. So let's have a little look at what's going on in this code right now, and I'll explain some of the uh, confusing looking things that you see ahead of you. Um, this is a basic piece of code. Now, in Unity 3D, the code is attached to a particular object. So we put ours on the main camera, and you can see right now that the code is attached here. Um, you can enable it and disable it um, just by taking it here. Um, if we look at the code itself and how it's structured, you can see um, it's probably worth explaining some of the things that are going on here. Um, the using statements that you see at the top, this is basically what parts of Unity Engine or what parts of C-sharp system code um, we're actually going to use. Um, sometimes you'll have to add things um, to this, um, particularly in the new Unity Engine. You have to add things like UI elements, and you have to add code for that. So it doesn't um, it keeps the code nice and small, but it does mean that you just need to know which ones you're using and when they work and when they don't work. Um, what we see next is a, a declaration of public um, and a class, and uh, this is exactly the same name as the file name that you've uh, that you created earlier on for the CS, the the C sharp code file. Um, and that's really important. Sometimes you'll change the inside Unity. It's quite easy to change the name of this, um, but that will cause an error because uh, the class name and the file name has to be the same. What the uh, call on mono behavior is is a inheritance, and it's a, a C sharp feature. Um, basically, you're inheriting the behaviors, uh, inheriting the code for mono behavior. So um, that gives us functionality that doesn't exist or wouldn't have existed in a single um, class of our own making. Um, this is required with any Unity 3D object and it's pretty important because it, it runs um, in the background and takes care of a lot of stuff that we don't need to concern ourselves about. Um, what you see next is a comment. Um, you can add in comments at any time you like. Um, with the two forward slashes. Um, you can try it right now if you want. Um, you can type in a comment. Um, there's other ways to do comments. Um, you can do whole blocks of comments with the forward slash and the star. And you'll see it comments out everything. Um, and then you can finish that with the star forward slash. You do it the other way around and that uncomments um, things. It's quite handy if you're coding and you want to get rid of something but you're not sure you're going to get rid of it permanently. Um, it's sometimes quite good to, to comment things out so that you can um, leave them there in case you need them later but um, make them not part of the execution or compilation of the C sharp file. Um, what we have next is our first function. Um, now, this is part of the class. You can see I mentioned earlier curly brackets. Now, the curly brackets um, have to start and end. Um, if you've got them missing or you've got them out of order, it'll cause errors and it'll be hard to track. So, just if you, one of the first things to check in uh, bug tracking is that the curly brackets are matching and they're the ones that you expect them to be. Um, in our first function, it's called start. Um, and it has no parameters. So the um, when you run a function, you pass things to it. You pass data to it. Um, we'll do that later on. We'll pass um, pass information to a function. But right now, it's got blank. It's got just an open brackets and a closed brackets with absolutely nothing between it. Um, that makes us makes everyone realize that this is a function, but it doesn't have any parameters that we're passing. The function is called start, and its return type is void. Um, void means nothing. Um, just like when you go out into space into the void, it means there's absolutely nothing there. So um, this is what the void return type is. And this is very common within um, C Sharp code um, to have a void return type. Um, the curly brackets uh, start and end our block of code. So the start function um, has just one line in it that we put in earlier on. Um, you can change this to whatever you want. Um, you could um, print hello John and uh, it'll print hello John. Um, this print function, just like a start function, has um, parameters. Uh, you can see the parameters are surrounded by brackets and it takes, um, these parameters take one string of letters and they are defined by these uh, the uh, quote marks before and after what we want to print out. Um, and funnily enough the print function prints things out. 
The important thing I mentioned earlier is the semicolon at the end of every line. Um, I've been coding for years and I've been teaching coding for years and uh, the one thing that I constantly find is uh, people forget to put semicolons at the end of the line and if I'll show you right now if I um, if I do another line right here um, if I do that um, but I forget the semicolon before and I save my code it looks like the errors on this line um, but actually it's not the error is earlier on um, because there's no semicolon it it realizes that it, it doesn't realize that this is a new line and this is a new function so it's got a parser error um, that you can see in this code if we try to go back to unity 3d and run it it would come up with errors and it says it's expecting a semicolon um, double clicking on the red error either in here or in the console will put the cursor to the line that it thinks the errors on um, and that's a really good um, tip to find where your problems are rather than just obscure errors that you see listed in the in the, in the console if you um, double click the error it'll come up with some help so it might help you um, to know where you're going so I've got a couple of lines of print and then the start function is uh, it finishes its block of code finishes now funnily enough the start function it tells us here it gets used for initialization um, so when I when the game starts when I hit the play button this bit of code gets run on all of the objects that are in our scene now we've only got a couple so um, the start function is gonna is put these things out um, the update function gets done every frame so there's a loop that's constantly running the update so when we run our code right now if we hit play um, the two pieces of information come up um, the code is currently running it's still running the update function right now um, we're going to just experiment with this so I want you guys to do this as well so if you um, if you say um, if we leave leave hello John inside the uh, start function but we take another of the print functions and we paste it inside the update um, you could probably imagine that this is not such a great thing to do um, but we're going to try it anyway um, I'm going to stop the game before we do it so I'm going to clear the console I'm going to hit play and you'll see that hello John was first and then hello Steve is happening all the time now very quickly I'm already up to 300, 400 um, 500, yeah that's not good if I kept going with this the game could potentially uh, run out of memory and crash the computer so um, it's best to stop that before we do so we've got 884 my name is Steve and that was obviously because inside update this was repeating round and round and round and round and round and printing my name is Steve all the time um, and then the class ends here so um, hopefully that makes this a little bit clearer in our next uh, video we're going to be looking at variables and we're going to try and get this to do some some more interesting things than just printing out Hello John or Hello Steve.